Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Digital Marketing Mondays. My name is Devin Littlefield. And I'm Hans Riemer. And today we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of exciting things. But before we dive into that, I want to remind everybody, Digital Marketing Mondays is a show designed for marketers to be able to help inform them on weekly marketing news. We bring you the latest insights and our unique perspectives on what's happening in the marketing world and what you need to be doing to help modify your tactics on a day-to-day -day basis in order to achieve the best marketing and business results. So with that, Hans, what do you have for us today? Well, so Devin, I've got right here a little uh, note that uh, uh, we found out that Google is planning to delay the removal of their cookies in uh, late 2023. Right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what they were planning to do, Devin, and then what does this change of plans mean to our fellow marketers out there? Yeah, and it's, it's actually a pretty funny story all the way around, right? Because Google, in this kind of hype to keep up with Apple, essentially, with all of their privacy things they've been releasing recently, uh, Google decides, hey, we're gonna we're gonna stop, we're gonna disable third-party cookies from the Google Chrome browser. And in relatively short notice, the original timeline was to be removing them by January of 2022. So we really did not, as marketers, we did not have a lot of time to actually deal with these changes and what was going to be happening. So I, I think there's a probably a big sigh of relief in the industry seeing that um, this is moving to uh, 2023 now, and and they just vaguely said late in 2023. Um, so it's not even clear when that is. But I think. I think a lot of people are excited for this change, gives a little bit more time to breathe. Um, yeah, and, and continue to see what happens. So what effect would this have had on advertisers if, they, if, if Google were to implement what the changes they were planning to implement? What effect would this have on people? <laughs> the, the hard part of trying to answer that question is it's, it's partially unknown. Right, because okay. advertising, especially for any type of retargeting campaigns or or certainly just for understanding behavior on websites, right, they, it largely leans in on third party data and third party data. Um, with having removed that, it's going to then mean that there's a heightened priority on to first party data, of course, which means that it's owned data by you, the organization, the business, whatever. Right. So. Mm -hmm. It really, the, the the challenge here was that they also, when they came out with this first announcement, they also simultaneously talked about Flock or Federated Learning of Cohorts, which mm -hmm. was essentially Google's way of saying AI is going to just amalgamate the data and, and just generalize it, effectively mm -hmm. not to be that much different from affinity audiences for anybody who is familiar with that from you know google ads in particular basically just giant buckets of people in terms of general interests um but the problem was there's a there were no studies about flock there was very limited understanding or even confusion in the industry about what flock was or, or really how it works and so I think Google did not do a ton of due diligence in this regard, and this was one of the many reasons why they did decide to kind of push back. But mm. yeah, really the the goal in the future is going to be leaning in on Flock and then first party data, which is still something that I think companies should be focusing on. I see. So are people, are advertisers gonna have less information to go on in terms of measuring uh, campaign success and, and uh, engagement and things like that? What, what, what are, what's the What's the overall effect here of this change? Sure. I mean, I think advertisers will still get data, but it's going to look a little bit different. I think automation is going to become much bigger priority for Google moving ahead. And this is slightly generalizing here, but uh, with regards to this update, what's going to happen is that Google is going to obfuscate the data in such a way as to say, here are these general buckets of people that visited your website previously based on their interests, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still going to see some top line metrics as it relates to it, but a lot less specifics about, um, you know, more of exactly what pages were visited, right? Mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. Obviously, Ooh. Google Analytics will keep tabs on a lot of that, but it's now much more limited in how we target people you know, from the Google ads perspective. So mm. it's it's going to be interesting to see 
they Google has to come up with a lot more stuff for advertisers to cling on to and add yeah. a lot more clarity around flock. I think before th removing third parties will truly be a <laughs> effective uh, method for, for Chrome in particular. So right. plus they also stand to benefit from gaining another year and a half worth of data of users really. <laughs> now, why do you think they were doing this? Is this was this supposed to improve the privacy of of, of web browser people, uh, people using their browser, or what? Yeah, I, I truthfully, I think they were just trying to follow suit with Apple and try and appear to be privacy privacy gods, right? Mm -hmm. um, Apple has obviously been in the forefront in that market and in that in that way, but Google. I, I think Google has always had a bad image of not being very privacy centric and it's with a general cultural knowledge that everybody's being tracked everywhere all the time now. Mm -hmm. It's starting, privacy is becoming much more in the forefront. Uh, Apple's clearly the leader in that space and Google is just trying to do anything they can to, to do it. As another net benefit, though, for Google, something to keep in mind is that, especially for Google Ads, you know, with with display, search, and uh, YouTube video um, advertising, the thing to keep in mind is that they are really, really, really pushing advertisers to move to automated bid strategies mm -hmm. and leaning in on right. on their AI. This is effectively a win-win for them because on the forefront, it makes them look like they're privacy-centric company. On the mm -hmm. back end, it's it's forcing more advertisers to go into automated advertising is it, or automated bid strategies is what it comes mm -hmm. down to. Wow. So wow. I I know as an advertiser, I'm I'm pretty upset about this change. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. right? Because it's going to just mean another automated thing that we have to try and keep up with or you know reduce reduce as much of the automation as possible. On right. the consumer side, though it gives a little breath of fresh air knowing that there is somebody who's trying to reduce the amount of data that's passing in between websites, which is generally, I think, a good thing to do. But again, that's from the consumer perspective, not an advertisers. Is Google still able to capture all this data that they were able to capture before? Are they giving <laughs> oh, yeah. up some of that data or are they simply restricting access to that data to people like us who are advertising, helping advertisers? They have the data. They they're okay. it's in, you know teraflops teraflops of data in servers all across the world. Uh, all this data exists. I think okay. what it's coming down to is trying to be the good guys, right? And and automate these types of things that really uh, will just force advertisers to, again lean in more on the automations and to their to their. Um, to their argument, right? Automations can genuinely help in some ways offload minute tasks mm -hmm. that you know day-to-day -day advertisers have to take on. But on the flip side, uh, you obviously lose all sense of control <laughs> in terms of who you're targeting, where you're targeting, why you're targeting, uh, and and really even controlling the bids, right? So it it's definitely a double-edged sword. So at this point, we're a little more than halfway through 2021. This mm -hmm. is going to get rolled out in 2023, according according to what Google has released. Uh, what can people do in the meantime, or what should people do? Uh, obviously, you know, there's the the the, the level of alarm and uh, uh, concern has gone down. We've bought some time. That's great. But what do you think uh, uh, agencies and advertisers ought to do in the meantime uh, to keep in mind that this is probably going to happen at some point? Google generally, when they announce these things. They don't always do them when they say they're going to do them, but they eventually do do them, right? So what do you think our, our um, clients and advertisers ought to be doing in the meantime, if anything? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. And I think it's continuing on the path that I think a lot of advertisers were starting to head down the road of when this first kind of came out as an announcement. And really what it comes down to is get as much first party data as you can. Mm -hmm. Start collecting that, have the mechanisms in place to collect it and, and make sure you're doing an adequate job segmenting on your own within platforms that you control and you own. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. marketing automation platforms are a great place to, to do that. And that's what they're designed for. Mm -hmm. So continuing down that path. I think the other thing is developing those lists of people, right? Yeah. I really going after your own self-identified segmenting for your lists and 
I mean, HubSpot, as an example, offers this right now to be able to match those lists against, uh, you know, or sync them to Google ads and be able to start targeting against them. Mm -hmm. That is the approach that everybody will have to do one in 2023 once Google Chrome removes this third party data. So the recommendation is keep going, get ready for get ready for the change mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. we were extended another year and a half or so uh, before this actually rolls out doesn't mean that we shouldn't be working on it now. Gotcha. And then I think the third and final thing is taking a better look at how you're tracking your ad performance and, and starting to think less about just some of your top line metrics when it comes to, you know, overall impressions or clicks, your CTR, but really just trying to understand at a holistic level, how all of your marketing efforts and your advertising efforts are playing together. Cause I think mm -hmm. we'll just continue to see obfuscation of data, um, you know, as we continue down the road, well past 2023 and when these third party cookies, uh, are removed. And so marketers need to be thinking about, uh, understanding holistically what is all what are all of my marketing efforts in unison combined doing to drive results right so we're thinking kind of a bigger bigger number type scenario not quite yeah. down to the minute level of what is this keyword or this audience doing for us specifically so so these are kind of best practices anyway so so you know for those for those of you who are doing the right thing now probably not a lot of gears need to be shifted for those who are sort of sure. throwing money at um, various ad platforms and hoping something will stick, that's probably not a good strategy going forward. Would you say that's a, a fair statement? It is. It is. Yeah. It, this is probably not going to be extremely new methodologies for, for some marketers out there. Mm -hmm. But for those who haven't thought about that or start planning for it, now's a good time to do it. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks, Devin. Uh, that's been very informative. I hope it's helpful for you, our viewers. And um, thanks for doing this. And uh, why don't you wrap us up then? Yeah, yeah. And thanks for thanks for asking the questions. This is certainly all good stuff to be thinking about and talking about amongst uh, the marketing and the ad teams for sure. Uh, but again, thanks to everybody for tuning in, whether you're listening in, reading on our blog, or whether you're uh, watching from the various video platforms. We appreciate you signing on. Uh, certainly leave a comment, make sure to subscribe or like any of this content and, and let us know what you're really thinking of it. We want to hear your voice and, and we want to know how we can certainly make this content better for you. So with Great. that, again, Devin Littlefield, Hans Riemann, signing Reimer. off. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Cheers. Bye.